Hi, I'm back. It's Annie Baker time. I am back with Ann Lewis today. We are going to talk about some of the myths around reverse mortgages. Welcome back. This is part two. Again, I after filming, I decided to break it down into two videos. So here's the second part, five through eight. And stick around to the end because I have a little treat, a little present for you, a little freebie. Well, it's not really a freebie. It's actually something a little bit better than a freebie. So stick around to the end. You don't want to miss it. Hi, Anne. How are you? Hi, Annie. Great to see you again. Number five, I won't be able to leave my home to my kids. We kind of already touched on this, that, you know, the heirs and one of the adult children yeah. buy the house out. So, um, you know, whether they, if there's only one heir, you know, they can just buy, you can't take over the house with a reverse mortgage regardless. So, you know, or if there's a regular mortgage, even people can't just walk in and just take it all over. You have to refinance it into your name. Yeah. So, and sometimes I've even seen where the, the, the kids actually are of age to get their own reverse mortgage. Oh, God, so that makes they, sense. yeah. So they, they inherit the home they go ahead and put their own reverse mortgage on it. Um, oh of course, gosh. those kids Amen. would have to be 62 um, and pri plan to live in the home as their primary residence, um, pay the property taxes, and then maintain the home. Those four things they have to do. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was that was a fantastic kind of um, uh, thing that they were able to do. Um, but if they're not 62, then they can just get a traditional mortgage, refinance it right. into their own name. Um, yeah. Okay. And make sure that they're, you know, that make sure that their parents have a trust, um, because that would make the transfer of um, of heirs, you know, very streamlined um, and easy, as opposed to having to go through probate during this kind of tough time. Yeah, I'm so. Oh my gosh, it's like my mantra is like, make sure you have a living trust. Make sure you have a living trust, because holy cow, that probate is a bummer. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It could really, pro, it could really, um, you know, hold up things and here the heirs have a kind of a, a, a deadline to, to, to take care of business. Yeah. Um, and, uh, the probate could really kind of put a damper on that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's just such a process. Um, yeah. It's a process. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Number six, the myth, I can't qualify because my home isn't paid off. Yeah. And a lot of people think that in order to get a reverse mortgage, they have to start clean, you know, with no loan on, on the home at all. But more and more, we're seeing that people do coming into retirement and are thinking about reverse mortgages actually do have a, have a balance. Um, so that's kind of been a, a dispelled, you know, myth um, about that. Also, probably one of the most important popular reasons to get a reverse mortgage is to have their existing one paid off with a reverse because they're trading in a payment for not having a payment anymore. So if someone has a payment of maybe $2,000 a month or perhaps more or less, um, refinancing a traditional mortgage into a reverse mortgage you know, all of a sudden their, their cash flow looks a lot better by $2,000 per month. And, and, and that's just a huge, huge benefit. Oh my gosh. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Number seven, I hear a lot of people had their home foreclosed on with these loans. Is that true? Or is that a myth? Um, before, um, when reverse mortgages started going, they, they didn't really have a lot of of uh, protections in place that they do now. Before they did not have customers being able to uh, have to go through financial assessment. Um, and I think that that was kind of probably a big reason there was a lot of foreclosure um, because what would happen is if they just took out the money or maybe received a lump sum, um, and didn't really know to pay the property taxes and keep the home up and pay the insurance. Um, if those things weren't paid, then sure, um, you know, the, the, the lender could come in and, and look to foreclose upon. Um, but since 2014, there's been some, some protections put in place. And one of them has been the financial assessment um, that each uh, loan applicant has to go through so they can make sure that they have the means and the willingness to pay those, pay those bills. 
Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, last one, number eight. I need cash flow, but I'm not desperate. It's yeah. interesting. I do feel like people think if you get a reverse mortgage, you're like desperate in or something, but that's not yeah. true. Um, it can help in, in desperate times. It could help when someone needs it now. It also will help when they need to kind of fund their retirement. They're kind of thinking about the next 20 years. What does that look like? And then also figuring it out for the, for the future of their heirs. So there's kind of three areas that the reverse mortgage kind of covers. It's also a very popular planning tool for financial advisors um, to be able to use a reverse mortgage in combination with their retirement assets that they have. Maybe they have a 401k or an IRA, um, a Roth IRA or a pension. Um, they use them as a tool kind of off of each other um, not, you know, to preserve the, the, the balance in those retirement funds. So they're not always having to draw on those retirement funds and right. kind of protect those assets, you know, for the, for the long term. And I so it's becoming you. real, real popular now with financial planners to really recognize these tools that it does have um, and be able to, to help their customers. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I know. We've talked about that a little bit before and I, I love them for that reason. Um, yes. Well, gosh, yeah. this has been so helpful, Anne. I love it because I really think uh, just educating people on what's real and what's not, what's the truth, what's false. This has been great. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to dispel these things. I'm glad that we can talk about it. Just start from the basics. You know, um, there's so many features of a reverse mortgage that I think people want one kind of one answer of what it is, um, but it is so multifunctional that you kind of have to explore a little bit further. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I so appreciate you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Um, again, everybody, Anne's contact is right here. Mine is always here. To, don't ever hesitate to reach out to us. And um, I'm sure I'll be doing another video sometime soon, Anne, but thank you again for your time. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Annie. Thanks so much. We'll see you yeah. next time. Wow. Wasn't that great? Oh my gosh. I love talking to Anne. She always simplifies things and just makes me understand these reverse mortgages even better. And I hope you are understanding them better too. Uh, if you'd liked anything that we had to say, please give us the thumbs up, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'm going to have more content with Anne, more content just about real estate in general. So you don't want to miss it. And here's the part that I talked about doing a freebie. I am doing a little special Right now it's December, 2022. I'm gonna do a special until March of 2023. So the end of March. So basically about three and a half months. Little special. If you are going to be selling your house, I will cover the cost of staging, home, and a pest inspection. Honestly, that's probably close to around six or $7,000. So it's sort of my way of giving back to my community little special for three months. So till March, 2023, if you're seeing this video anytime before then, and you want to sell your house, it's about $6,000 I'm giving away. Okay. So all my contact is below. Thank you again for watching, supporting my little YouTube videos and have a great one.